Last week we talked about convex hull algorithms and we saw that we can compute a convex hull of a set of endpoints in two dimensions in n log n time. The natural question is can we do better or is n log n the best possible? Here we're going to show that this is actually the best possible. Imagine I have a bunch of input set that needs to be sorted. Okay? If I restrict myself to comparison based algorithms, then the sorting n numbers requires n log n running time. So imagine that this one dimensional point set is my input numbers that I need to sort. So for example, assume that these numbers are given to me x1, x2, x3, etc. Okay. Obviously they are in random order, so these xi's are not in increasing, decreasing on or any particular order. Then what I can do, given this input set of numbers, I can create an input set of points. So you take this point, so value x1, and you replace it with a point x1 and x1 squared. Okay. So that would be, of course, a point in two dimensions. Similarly, you replace the point xi, or a value xi, with a point xi, xi squared. Okay. The resulting point set is going to be two-dimensional in the sense that it lies on a parabola. It lies on the parabola y equals x squared. And now here is it, here's the observation we can make. We can make an observation that if we could compute a convex hull of these set of input points, the convex hull will be a shape that has all of the points on its lower hull, and the upper hull will be just a vertex containing the minimum to the maximum. Okay, so that's going to be the convex hull of the set of input points. Forgive my drawing here. And since the convex hull, when we compute them, we compute them in the order of the vertices. In other words, uh, we represent the convex hull by a list of vertices in, say, clockwise order. It means that once I compute the convex hull, I can walk through these points in, say, clockwise order. But what happens if I walk through them in a clockwise order, starting from the point with the maximum x coordinate? I go to the point with the next max, then to the point with the third maximum value, and etc. In other words, I will traverse the point in the sorted order. This means that if I could compute the convex hull of the blue points by traversing them in, say, clockwise order, I can get a list of sorted numbers. This shows that um, sorting is, um, no, sorry, convex hull is at least as hard as sorting. And since for sorting we have an analog and lower bound, therefore lower bound for the convex hull follows. This argument is not end exactly true. In the next video, which is going to be optional, I make the argument a bit more precise. But for, I guess, 90% of you who are not PhD students, this is essentially good enough. That if you could compute the convex hull of blue points and we sort them, since sorting is analog n, can't be heard than analog n, then the convex hull can't be better than log n. Because, for example, if I could build the convex hull of the blue points in linear time, then I could sort them in linear time as well, which we know is not possible. So therefore, you can't compute the convex hull in, in linear time, or, it, or better than n log n. Okay. So that's, um, that's, um, that's a small, yeah, the small detail I'm going to mention in, in the next year. In particular, the small detail requires defining a particular model called algebraic decision tree model. Um, but again, 90% of we can ignore this. Um, if you look at this reduction, you might remember that we um, we looked at another convex hull algorithm, and that was gift wrapping. And we saw that gift wrapping has O of n times h. And of course, if h is constant, then that's linear time. So it looks like that contradicts this statement, that if you could compute the convex hull, then you get a sort of numbers. But here's the thing. In this reduction, the, all the points are along the convex hull. So in other words, this does not apply to the cases where there are fewer than n points on the convex hull, as exhibited by this gift wrapping algorithm, which does better than n log n when h is very small. So because of this observation, a lot of people in the early days of computational geometry started to look at output sensitive algorithms. So output sensitive means that an algorithm whose running time gets smaller or an algorithm that gets faster the smaller the output is. 
In this case, the output is the convex hull, and since uh, and if convex hull is constant time, then the gift wrapping algorithm will run in linear time. So therefore, gift wrapping is an output sensitive algorithm, but it's not the best possible output sensitive algorithm because for most values of h, this is going to be much worse than a log n. A truly optimal behavior would be something like n log h. This algorithm would be better than gift wrapping because we're just replacing h with the log h. But it's also better than n log n because h is at most n. So this term is at most log n. In other words, log h obviously is smaller than h, but it's also smaller than log n. So an n log h algorithm would be better than both of, the, both of these behaviors. And in fact, you can show that n log h algorithm would be optimal if I assume that the output size is h or the hull size is h. And that's what we're going to look at later on in this um